next question. Uh, this is a this is a question that I have. Um, we what we're doing is is so so at odds with the American Diabetes Association recommendations. What what are they basing their recommendations on? Where do these recommendations come from? There has to be some source uh, for them. Well, uh, they do have committees. They have a foot care committee. They have a uh, nutrition committee uh, that are, I believe, appointed by uh, the uh, president and, and uh, other uh, uh, big shots in the organization. Um, they also have councils that um, relate to uh, certain aspects of their functioning. Like I'm on the nutrition council. I uh, used to be, all, I might still be on the foot care council. Um, uh, but uh, I think the people who are picked are not necessarily uh, picked by the councils. They're picked by higher-ups. And I know, for example, of one person on the nutrition committee uh, who is fully aware that patients do much better with a low-carb diet. Um, but uh, she's been very active and has uh, supported the high carb for ages for career purposes. And um, uh, if you start bucking the powers that be, you won't move up in the system. Uh, so that's part of the problem. Uh, another part might relate to how does it affect the grants that you get? Um, or are you uh, working for a company? Uh, for example, uh, I've seen situations where members of the Nutrition Council, I don't recall the, what the current member, they have to disclose their affiliations. I don't know, don't know offhand the current members, but I've looked at it. In the past, we've seen people working for cereal companies, working for bread companies, working for uh, you know, large uh, food companies that make a lot of high carbohydrate foods. Uh, so there's conflict of interest. Um, uh, the I uh, recently sent you uh, right. a page from the current editorial in the current issue of Diabetes Care, the ADA's clinical journal where the editor is boasting that uh, in 19, uh, no, in 2010, on uh, 2009, um, only 39% of their guidelines hard evidence to back them up. Right. And now, five years later, they're up to 51%. So still, 49% of their guidelines are unsupported by scientific evidence. And they're boasting about it. And uh, uh, here you have these dietary guidelines that are unsupported by evidence. Uh, you don't know where they came from. Uh, there are a lot of personal opinions. There are a lot of uh, personal financial needs, you know, uh, you better do what your company says. You'll get kicked out if you say that you shouldn't have carbohydrate and all they sell is carbohydrate, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the patient doesn't, uh, appear in this. Um, I mentioned, uh, uh, the situation, for example, with regard to the cause of ulcerations. And it appears that virtually 100% of the diabetic foot ulcers are caused by people uh, 
uh, trying to remove calluses as recommended by the ADA. They say that a professional should uh, re use a sharp instrument to remove calluses, a trained professional, yet those are the people who are getting amputations. Um, the calluses should never be removed. They're the only cause of amputations. Why remove them? Now, that is their removal of the cause. So we have these guidelines that make no sense, that frequently bring in money, and um, uh, it's sad. It's, it's, the, it's part of the reason why I'm uh, spending so much time on these videos awesome. and on other efforts to change uh, what's being done to patients.